guys, what's going on? It's Ash here coming at you today in Clash Royale. Happy balance day for you guys. And hey, the majority of you guys actually like the balance changes. I posted a poll, over 30,000 of you guys put your votes in, and most people graded it a B overall, and I tend to agree. I also vote for a B on this balance change personally, but one card that was affected obviously was the rework of the heal. Now, early on, the very first grand challenge to be completed with the new one elixir heal was actually, let's see if I still have it on my on my deck screen. Do I? I don't, but I'll flash on the overlay for you guys. It was a three musketeer pump Valkyrie heal deck. But Lucas Gamer, who I'm joined by today, actually is having a lot of success with this, not this deck, this deck, the Mortar Freeze Heal Hog with all the swarm in there. And uh, we're going to be watching him live on ladder today. So let me get to his, okay, there we go. Come on, Ash. Get your, get your stuff together here. All right, so we're going against Golem here, it looks like, in the very first matchup. Uh, and uh, I think the early predictions on heal is I think that it will be meta, but I don't think the new heal will be in any way OP. It is very hard for these one elixir cards to be considered OP, even though if you ask a lot of people to this day what was the strongest card in the game, they will say the four skeleton one elixir card. So do not underrate these cards. We go uh, mortar into the golem here. This is going to be one of those matchups where we're going to want to get as many, as much damage, excuse me, as possible possible in the first two minutes because this is a very very heavy golem beatdown deck and he goes ahead and he nados there but we do take care of that night witch and we have the perfect kind of counter push set up here for us guys uh with lucas lucas finished top i don't know actually where he finished last season on ladder we'll have to check did you guys see that small little lag spike right there when he's deploying that mortar if you want to rewind and go look at it has anybody experienced been experiencing that at all in the game as well I, I find it really annoying how buggy the game has been lately i gotta say I mean, they really didn't hit a home run on the last update in terms of the bugs in the game, man. And they haven't fixed them yet. Jeez, I hate to be negative. You guys know me. I try to be glass, glass half full, but some of the lag and the bugs and stuff like that, I mean, they really need to get on this stuff this week. And I haven't forgotten about the uh, trade tokens either. A lot of people have said, you know, in the, in the comments the last few days, Ash, you know, are you going to hold them to their word? The nice freeze there by, by Lucas. And the heel comes down. And the hog comes down. That's how you pressure opposite lane. And he's going to get that right tower down as well. Man, this is going to be a nasty deck. Freeze heal. I don't know, man. I can't be held responsible for this deck. Don't hold your friendly local content creator responsible. <laughs> anyway, we're going to lose our left tower here. You better believe that Lucas is going to go for the three crown, but he has to defend first. And that was a really smart uh, freeze there, making sure he can take care of this baby dragon or allow, excuse me, the uh, minion horde to do a little bit of damage. Now he's in a situation where he has to drop that heal, and he does. Uh, he's going to take some damage, though. He needs to answer this, and he freezes again here. What is he going to do? He's just going to cycle. Okay, this is tricky. This is tricky. One second left. Oh, boy. That was, that was, that was clutch. It was just close at the end there. Let's go ahead and uh, edit out and bring you guys match number two. All right, going into match number two here, guys, against Heisenberg. Well, I'm assuming maybe, it, maybe it's a different Heisenberg. So I'm thinking like Crucible Wrath Heisenberg. But if it is that Heisenberg, he's going to be playing Giant Double Prince Spear Goblin's Bait. And maybe it is with the Goblin Gang. Anyway, guys, to finish up what I was saying earlier, it's not that I haven't heard you guys about the trade tokens and the trade tab and all that good stuff. I have it still in the forefront of my mind. I will address it to Supercell. I'll ask for their an update on the situation. But they have been away for a while on a holiday vacation with Christmas and the New Year's. So I didn't want to just like pester them every day with messages. So I will follow up again this week, and I'll keep you guys uh, abreast of the news as soon as I receive it. So, the other thing I wanted to mention as we go in with a freeze, oh boy, that's a big, that's a big push there. It was a nice freeze, nice snowball by the opponent too though, and we're able to defend with the Goblin Gang nicely on the left side, so we do have the t damage lead about one minute into this match. Now, the other thing that I wanted to mention is, some of you might be wondering, what about 2.6 Hog Cycle or 2.5 or 4 Hog Cycle with freeze in it? And Lucas actually, we've been actually, uh, not recording, but but watching him play for a couple hours now today. And he's been testing out a bunch of different hog-free cycle decks. 
in this, or excuse me, Hog Heal Cycle decks. And this is the only deck that he's really, really loved and, and felt confident in recommending. So, of course, you guys are free, as always. I always encourage you guys to make substitutions, change up things, experiment with these decks, and make them work for you, your play style and your trophy range or whatever you're running into. But this is the deck that Lucas stands by as something that he feels is shareworthy and uh, in his favor of the bunch that we've tried. So that's why I'm bringing you this deck today. So now it's a mortar play by the opponent. We're going to go in with the uh, the gang there, and it's obviously not the same Heisenberg, either that or he's got a different deck, because the, the mortar does lock on for one hit there, but the fact that there's a mortar and no giant and double prince, it shows you that it's not the deck that we anticipated there. So we're going to go with the mortar in the right lane here, and he's going to go with a, uh, a goblin gang and also a dark goblin. We do have freeze. He's probably going to go rascals here again, and he does. We go in with the hog. We have freeze ready. We have heal ready too. Let's see what we do. I would heal right now, and there it is. Heals down. That's going to allow those minions to stay alive. It's also going to allow the hog to probably get an extra hit. A wow comes down from Heisenberg, and I will echo that sentiment. Now we're going to go in heavy in the opposite lane here. We have bats. We also have the goblin gang. It's going to do a good job on defense there. Our tower does fall down to 1655 HP, but it's not over yet. We're definitely going to need another big hog push in the right lane. Let's see what we do. We go in with the minion horde. It's going to take care of the dark goblin, and again, the uh, rascals come down. This time, I don't think we will be. Nope, we're not going to go ahead and freeze. We're not going to go ahead and heal. We're going to play defense first. Here comes a skeleton barrel. Look at the deck that the opponent's playing here. Minor skeleton barrel mortar deck. Interesting. I can't say that I've seen this exact deck before. I've seen very similar versions, but not this exact version. Now we have an elixir lead here. We ignore that minor. We go in with a mortar, a defensive mortar by the opponent. We're going to go in with a hog and a minion horde and a heal freeze, I bet, here. Let's see what he does. There's the hog. Minion horde. Heal down first. Ooh, we have the freeze ready to go. We have enough elixir to play it. Are we going to use it? We do. One bat still alive, but the GG by the opponent, that's going to be it. I like it. 2-0. and oh. Let's go ahead and bring you match number three. This is a fun deck, guys. All right, guys. Here we go with match number three against SK Knox. SK Gaming player, obviously, from Germany. They got a really great squad. Shout out to Mythja, by the way, who announced his professional retirement the other day. My uh, One of my... Uh, thumbnail artist, great guy. So here we go with the hog starting things out here. Obviously, Luke is not afraid to go in with the hog, being a fast cycle deck, uh, and being a, 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 I guess, a little bit more on the uh, aggressive side of things uh, is Lucas. And that was actually an interesting freeze there. He freezes up the skeletons from the skeleton barrel and also the bats there, and then an interesting miner out of the opponent. <laughs> So I don't know. Both players starting this match in kind of an unorthodox way, ladies and gentlemen. So let's go ahead and see what he does here. It's going to be a Dark Goblin in the back for Nox, and we go immediately with that Mortar opposite lane. So Mortar's going to be on Mortar again. Man, is it safe to say that Mortar is definitely doing very, very well right now, both in the old meta, and I uh, I don't think it's going out of the limb to say it will be doing well in the new meta as well. Mortar definitely uh, two matches in a row here that we're facing, and of course we're using it as well. I think that really, I mean, Okay, let's see what he does here. I want to I pay attention. Is he going to freeze this? Nope. He doesn't freeze or heal there. And that was a probably a, a, the reason I stopped to kind of see what he was going to do in that situation is I wanted to see the difference. I think that one of the keys to mastering these cycle decks, guys, is to notice when you're watching pro gameplay like this is to note when they don't use their support spells and when they do. And in that case, he wanted to make sure he had enough elixir left to defend. And now he's sitting fine here. I mean, they're going to set up with a, a mortar and also bats. We can ignore the bats. The tower will finish those off. And now we have a decent elixir lead here. And we'll be able to take care of that mortar. And that all kind of stems from that decision-making process that we talked about when he didn't opt to use that freeze in that situation. I think a player with less discipline, like yours truly might have used a freeze in that situation on offense. Okay, I would have definitely done it. Now now I would have done it again here. Is he going to do it? No, he's not. Well, he can't use a freeze there. That would have been a really bad freeze because the uh, opponent did a really good job of spacing out the Dark Goblin and the Rascals, so we could not freeze in that situation. So now we have a log coming down against our gang. We're setting up with the defensive mortar here, and the opponent's going to be relentless going in with the bats and also the skeleton barrel here. And again, we're forced to kind of freeze in that situation. Uh, didn't have a great answer there, but mortar is going to be able to finish off 
off the skeletons, and then we use an Ice Spirit that will allow, hopefully, those bats, okay, or the mortar to finish off that Dark Goblin. Now, we have another mortar on offense. Hog's gonna get two swings against that uh, opposition mortar, and here we go again here, guys. Miner comes in. We catch the Miner with the Goblin Gang. Gonna finish that Miner off before the log fi uh, finishes off our Goblin Gang. Now, we have to deal with this boy, Rascal. We do so using an Ice Spirit, and here comes the bats down. Here comes the Hog again. We have five Elixir. We're gonna go in with, let's see, what are we gonna do here? Tricky. We go with the opposite lane mortar again. We do take care of the Dark Goblin. That was good. So this is a, this is an intense match here, guys. A Skeleton Barrel comes down again here. And, man, this deck, I can't believe we're running into this deck again. This is pretty, a, a pretty crazy deck here, uh, and apparently it's pretty good, too. We actually use a very strange freeze in that situation, but oh, I, didn't, I didn't even notice the hog. Where's that heal? There's the heal. This is the first time we used the heal of the whole match, but boy, is it going to be worth it here. The hog's still alive. Oh, my God, the surprise heal finishes off the match, and the opponent is just left saying, wow, and so are we. Man, that was a good one. Hey, let's keep the win streak alive. Come at you guys with the next match in just a moment. <laughs> All right, guys, here we go into the next match, and we're going to start out with a, an opposition hog here. So against Nova Dinium, I'm not sure uh, what they're playing, but coming off with a hog and a log, well, I think it's safe to say it's some sort of a hog deck with NATO. So Hog, Nato, Log starting out with the opponent, and Lucas is also thinking about this. Okay, what is it? What is this guy playing? Is it a, is a Hog XC Nato? Interesting. Anyway, we go in with the mortar. They're going to distract with an opposite lane Ice Golem here. Man, I still can't get over the finish of that last match. It's funny, you know, being like a content creator. Magic Ar- What is this? A Magic Archer? Man, what card is that? Is that a new legendary card on the arena, guys? Here it comes, a Hog Rider. That's going to be difficult, and we're going to have to freeze there. That was a really smart freeze in that situation because that could have been tower down had we not used it there. That was a nice play there by Lucas. The defensive freeze, even in a deck like this, can be incredibly useful. So let me go on a 10-second. I've already been a little bit more negative here on the today's video, right? But let me go on a 10-second freeze rant. I don't think the reduction of tower damage will do anything at all in, uh, in, in kind of remedying the issue of freeze right now on ladder. So unfortunately, I think it will be, or fortunately, I don't know, depending on how you're looking at it, I do think that it will be getting another nerf in the next balance changes. Not to complain about it, I think it's an interesting card, but I do think that the fact that it does any damage to troops is probably... It just needs a little bit of a nerf. So here we go. We're going to go in with another hog. We do get that swing there as the NATO pulls it away. And then we're going to get another swing. Magic Archer, not enough to finish that off. We might have to use the freeze here again on defense. Let's see if we do so. We're going to use bats first. We're waiting. Okay, switching up. I love this, man. And this is a another example of the skills of Lucas here. You know that the opponent was waiting for that freeze to drop. And they were prepared for it. So we switched up our defense. We kept the opponent guessing. It was a mortar that time and bats that we used on defense. And then we played the center goblin gang. So we're gonna go in with a hog just to keep the cycle going and to finish off that uh, tombstone by the opponent. Now we're gonna play some defense here. Uh, not able to do to uh, pig push, excuse me, is the opponent. We're gonna use a goblin gang here against this hog rider and then an ice spirit to freeze it all up. Then we go in on offense with the hog of our own. He has NATO, and it just, it's so difficult to combat both NATO and and uh, the t the NATO and the Tombstone that the opponent is playing. You guys, I don't have to tell you if you're Hog players how frustrating that combo can be. And then with the Magic Archer, considering Swarm is like the the main defensive component to this deck, is going to be a, a, a problem as well. We do get a Spear Goblin connection on that left tower, and just like last match, we have not used our one Elixir heal yet in this match. Can he finish off this match with another surprise one Elixir hero? Beautiful log by the opponent there that was good that's gonna hurt that's gonna hurt for sure we have to freeze in this situation a nato comes down from the opponent that was a nice nato and uh, part you know anticipating those bats there but didn't really work out we're able to finish off this mega minion in the right lane the hog does not get a hit on that left tower though 1706 to 1865 damage here about 25 seconds into overtime or so here comes another hog on offense we answer with a minion horde we have the mortar down fireball comes down gonna miss one of the minions but does get one hog hit and the fireball damage onto our tower the mortar is probably going to lock on here is it going to let's see let's see let's see no it's going to lock onto the magic archer my bad here comes the hog 
Here comes the Goblin Gang. Unfortunately, Magic Archer stays locked on the Goblin Gang. They drop the Hog there in the left lane. We use a Mortar. We do not get a Hog hit on that tower, though. But we are able to defend against this Hog opposite lane. It looks like that was a mistake based by the Oops uh, from Din Dinium over there. So here we go again. Two minutes now remaining in overtime here. Could this potentially even be a draw? We split the Minion Horde. He's going to NATO there for that Magic Archer. Uh, nice NATO by the opponent. It's going to allow the Magic Archer and the Mega Minion to both stay alive here. We use a defensive mortar. We set up with the Goblin Gang again. This time, no predictive log. A nice defensive sequence there. Mortar's gonna take care of that Magic Archer as well as distract him in the left lane. Here we go again. Oh boy. When is he gonna use the heal? When is he gonna use the heal? Is it gonna be? I'm, I'm rooting for another one of those situations like last match here, guys. Hog does not evade that tombstone. Instead goes right into it. A defensive mortar here set up by Lucas. Is he gonna be able to pull this? Hog, he is. And here comes the Hog into the mortar. A log value there for the opponent, but we do finish off that hog before he gets any swings on the tower. And again, a mega minion set up for the opponent here in the left lane. We go in with a mortar. We have double mortar right now. Now we use an offensive mortar. Can we take that tombstone down? We can. Skeleton's distracting right now. Now here comes a hog again for the opponent. One minute left in overtime. A good predictive log there. We're going to have to freeze again on defense. There's a freeze. And let's see. We got 1327 HP remaining. 1385 HP remaining on our side. Here we go again with a hog. Man, this is like cycle versus cycle. This is an insane match. I can't believe Lucas has not lost this match, honestly, just because the opponent does have the NATO and they have the Tombstone and we only really have the Hog. We haven't been able to use Freeze on offense unless I missed it here and we haven't used Heal at all in this matchup just given the fact that they have the NATO, they have the Fireball, they have the Magic Archer, so we don't really have an opportunity necessarily to heal that often here. Are we going to use it here? I, see, I think this would be a perfect time to heal potentially. We Freeze uh, left side. There's the heal. Can we get it? No, we didn't get any damage there onto the tower. And with 10 seconds left, it's going to be a draw, ladies and gentlemen. Guys, let's go ahead and do, well, I don't want to call it too early, but we have freeze if we need it. Uh, I don't want to call it too early, but yeah, yeah, that's going to be a GG. Hog goes in, and uh, well played. That was that was quite the match, even though it was a draw, guys. Hey, I'm going to bring you one more live match in today's video, because I'm just enjoying watching Lucas play this deck, honestly, guys. So I'll be right back with you when he finds the next matchup. All right, guys, here we go with our final match of the video. And again, guys, let me know in the comments what you think of the balance trade. Is your early impressions? Do you like the Battle Ram? Do you think still think it's viable? Do you think that Goblin Giant is viable? Do you think that Sparky might be viable? I've actually seen a Goblin Giant Sparky deck uh, get a 12 win already. So interesting. Maybe, maybe, potentially. Don't want to overreact this early in the season, though. So we freeze here on defense. Check out this deck. First three cards. Oh, it's Viper Slug. It's Nicole. I guess it's it's probably Nicole, right, guys? Uh, the arrows come down. So I'm thinking, I mean, who else would be playing uh, <laughs> the Giant Witch Inferno Dragon with uh, arrows, bats, and freeze in Graveyard, right? Uh, if it's freezing graveyard, we know it's definitely Nicole. So this is going to be an interesting first match of the uh, the video or last match, excuse me, of the video. Uh, 2258 damage. We did connect there with that mortar early on, I believe. But now that Nicole or Viper Slug, I would say Viper Slug, because I'm not sure 100. percent But the Valkyrie is placed down in the Inferno Dragon as well. So maybe I was wrong here. That's the danger of making these assumptions, just like we saw with uh, with highs. So here we go. It's going to be a, a minion horde coming through. It's a nice time to potentially uh, heal him up here. Let's see if he decides to do so. Is he going to? Nope. I would I would I would have considered maybe healing there if I was Lucas, just because it's only one elixir, right? As we talked about in like the second match, right? But hey, he's a million times better than I am. So now we might be able to. Well, arrows will probably. Oh, interesting. So no response at all. If the last card is Graveyard, it looks like Viper Slug is happy just to go ahead and try to get a big monster push and take that tower trade, figuring there's also 70 seconds or so left in this match. There's plenty of time for him or her to pull off a big, big Graveyard push. If this is Graveyard uh, played here, then we know it's definitely Nicole. So here we go, guys. It's going to be Bats. Freeze comes down. Another good defensive freeze. Arrows comes immediately down in response. And now we just have to contend with this giant here. 50 seconds left in remaining in this match here. Mortar is down, but no damage on the towers. And we go aggressive on offense again here. Inferno Dragon is down. Nice block with the uh, Valkyrie there, but we do freeze. We get a ton of freeze value, and we put the Goblin Gang in the pocket there. Now we have a Witch. This is definitely going to be a do-or-die push here in the right lane. Let's see that graveyard. Let's see it. Where's that graveyard? <laughs> 
I think Lucas thinks it's coming too, because he's using the bats early. Okay. Okay, no graveyard, but the Inferno Dragon does lock on. We immediately... Well, okay, that was a beautiful... Uh, that was a beautiful bats early on because it got the arrows out of hand there and allowed us to free up the uh, the elixir in the cycle to be able to use our minion horde there in that situation and of course to also use our goblin gang and not have to worry about those arrows and there it is that's going to be GG there wow what a video man I'm really happy with how this one came out the first heal deck that I've, I've shared in years i feel like at this point uh but either way uh, a huge shout out i'm not sure if that was nicole playing but you guys should check out her youtube channel she just uh live streams on a regular basis and uh, just an awesome positive upbeat uh girl who's an incredibly incredibly woman i guess who's an incredibly incredibly good player and knowledgeable knowledgeable about the game i'll include her link the link to her channel in the show notes below and of course all the links to lucas gamers uh player profile and uh, let's see where he is right now after all those ones eight seven in the world not too bad so guys that's gonna do it for the video another huge shout out to lucas for helping me out check out his player stats and profile thanks to statsrail.com in the description below guys thank you so much for watching i really appreciate it and as always take care guys